Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. My name is Vicar Brandy, and I am glad to be worshiping with you this morning. A couple of announcements about our life together here in the church. Uh, first, if you have not submitted your annual reports yet, please get those in. They're due by Monday the 11th. So Monday the 11th for annual reports. Uh, and also, if you haven't had the opportunity, we encourage you to participate in our 21-day Racial Equity Challenge. Uh, it is a challenge, meant to be a challenge, uh, all of us to wrestle with our understanding of race, power, privilege, and God's calling to us uh, to pull everyone into an inclusive society. So uh, if you haven't checked that out yet, we encourage you to jump in any time. Uh, for the rest of your messages, always make sure you check your weekly emails and the messenger for updates. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through these waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you, be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O merciful God, in this time when we find ourselves in tumultuous waters, you are down in the water with us as Emmanuel. We are thankful that you left the safety of heaven and came deep down into the chaotic waters 
to be our Savior and Lord, in whose name we pray. Mark does not waste words. He crisply heralds the event. Jesus comes down from his hometown of Nazareth to be baptized by John in the Jordan River. Jesus goes under the water as the others had under the same body of water his ancestors crossed after 40 years of wandering through the wilderness. Historic water, ordinary water. Just as Jesus comes up out of the depths of the water, he sees the heavens tear apart. The word here is not the gentle connotation of open, that is used in Matthew and Luke. The heavens tear apart. The Greek word here is a form of the verb schizo, from which we get schism or schizophrenia, or more simply, scissors. It is not the same word as open. I open the door, I close the door. I open the drawer to my dresser, I close the drawer to my dresser in the same tidy manner it opened. But something torn apart is not easily put back together again. What is ripped apart cannot easily return to its former state. God has torn open the heavens and come down. God rips open the heavens to tear down all barriers and make God's self present and accessible through this Jesus of Nazareth. Ready or not, here God comes. God is on the loose in the world and the presence of a gentle dove tells us that God is on the loose to bring forgiveness and peace for sinners deeply mired in the water depths. Now Jesus stands in the Jordan, dripping wet, without any further knowledge that anyone else saw the heavens torn apart or saw the dove or heard a voice. Though we usually imagine God speaking in a booming voice like that of James Earl Jones, resonant and deep, that voice is more often heard in movies or on YouTube than in the scriptures. God's voice can be a whisper, a breath, quiet as the still small voice that reached out to Elijah in desperate hiding in the cave. At the Jordan, the voice that comes down from heaven speaks to Jesus alone. It is intimate, direct, declarative. You are my son beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The heavens tear apart and the voice of God confirms that his beloved son is on a saving mission and nothing will go back to where it was before. From this day forward, from the day he saw the heavens torn apart, Jesus began tearing apart the pictures of how we thought a Messiah operated. He tore apart the divisions that separated rich from poor. He ripped apart the racial divide so that all complexions become precious in God's sight. He broke through human hardness of heart to bring forth compassion. He broke rituals that had grown rigid, routine, and removed from their deeper meaning. He tore apart the chains that bound some to demonic power and addiction. He tore apart the notions of what it means to be God's beloved son. Nothing would ever be the same. 
The heavens would never again close so tightly, and community, rather than categories, would govern human relationships. At the end of his earthly ministry, Jesus hung on a cross between heaven and earth, a movement that began with Jesus' baptism now ends with his death on the cross. When he drew his last breath, the curtain of the temple was torn into from top to bottom, torn apart as the heavens had been torn apart in his baptism. Same exact root word, schizo. The Holy of Holies no longer separated the sanctuary from the ordinary and ornery people. The curtain could never be repaired. There was no voice, but only the voice of a great painful deed of love extended with arms spread wide. Not even the fracture between death and life can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Beloved of God, is there a torn place in your life right here and right now? God tore open the heavens to meet you in the torn places. God tore down the temple curtain from top to bottom so that neither sin nor death nor disease will be able to separate you from that divine love. At the paper shredder where you scrutinize your last stack of bills, God meets you there. Within the torn loyalties deep in your heart, God meets you there. Around the attorney's table, where the divorce becomes final and what used to be quality relationships is now quantified by custody time and payments, God meets you in that torn place. Where the fissures and factions of political division erupt in our nation's capital, God dares to be in those torn places places too where tragedy has broken us and we can't put everything back together again God comes down to us in the torn places with healing wings yes when our Lord Jesus was baptized the heavens were torn apart and God endeavored upon a stooping and swooping mission. The heavens were torn apart so that God can get down to our tents and torn places. The torn places can linger for a long time. But in Christ Jesus, God tears open the heavens find our torn places, visible and invisible. And when God finds them, God fills them with love, peace, and community. And when God finds the torn places and the torn people, God strengthens us with that same powerful word that he poured over the Christ in the Jordan River. You are my child and beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Amen.
We join together today for the prayers of the church, guided by Christ made known to the nations. Let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, especially we pray today, guided by the Holy Spirit, that all may proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, especially we pray for the U.S. Congress in the midst of so much strife this week, and for all those who labor on behalf of our constitutional democracy day and night. May God inspire all people to use their strength wisely for peace, truth, and reconciliation. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the sick and those who provide medical care during this time of pandemic, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who grieve and suffer. Especially we pray for Elena, Nancy, Kim, George, Melanie, Joanne, Peggy, Ed, Bob, Ed, George, and those we name aloud or silently at this time. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For this congregation gathered in households, for students returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God may experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, who now rest from their labors, especially Marilyn O'Neill and Morty Segal, that their witness may inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray now boldly with the words that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us take time now to share the peace with one another in our homes, or text or email those with whom are on your mind. Today we also recognize the offering of our gifts, that which we have received and give back to God. Please remember to keep the church in mind uh, with your weekly gifts. Uh, make sure that you know that you can always drop your checks off to the church office or give electronically. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessings. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Um.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with mercy and grace. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.